Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video I am going to be making my own version of a 1960s brocade set that I found on eBay for $1,800 and that price was extremely high so um, I wanted to take on the challenge of making it cheaper which I didn't think would be very hard at all and it absolutely was not hard to do. Making it cheaper but also making it my own. I was going to copy the cape aspect of this set but I had sold the pattern that I wanted to use and I didn't want to buy another one and for the dress because I knew I was going to be spending a little bit more on fabric I decided to change that to a style that I liked better because the shift dress isn't exactly my style and while I would have been okay with completely um making that because I was spending a little bit more on fabric I thought it would just be better to make a dress that's completely my style so I started off this project wanting to replicate the look for less and then it turned into me being just inspired by the look and making something that better suits me um for less <laughs> Uh, but I did take some really important details from my favorite part of the set, which was the cape. And I made sure to keep the collar because that's what really drew me in to begin with. And I used a house coat pattern to bring this outfit to life. So if you're interested in seeing me make this outfit and finding out how much it is that I spent on making the outfit or how much it cost me for materials to replicate this outfit, then like this video, subscribe, and get real comfortable because this one is a little bit longer than usual. Now let's get into the patterns and material. For today's pattern, we're going to be using two patterns. For the dress, we're going to use McCall's 5782. It's a size 10 teen, bust 30. Um, and it comes in teen sizes as well as junior sizes. This pattern was issued or at least copywritten in 1961 and it comes in two views. View A has a slim pencil skirt with a bolero and view B has a full skirted option. If you've been here for any significant amount of time then you know that I've made this dress several times it is one of my favorites and view b is the one that i've made the most but this time we're going to make view a to try something a little different and i really love this dress because i like the neckline and my favorite feature of any vintage dress is a midriff now let's turn it to the back here you have all of the pattern pieces they come with 18 and then you have the sizing chart as well as the fabric requirements and the types of fabrics that you could use. When I first started planning this project, I was going to try and do a exact replica of the ad that I found on eBay, but then I decided that I would probably get more use out of something that was more me, so I changed up my direction and went for something that would suit me best and was more inspired instead of a replica, which is for me always more boring to do anyway. So instead of the cape, I wanted something that was more swing coat like. So I'm using Simplicity 4708. It is a house coat pattern. It's a size 12 bust 32. It comes in three different views. And today we're going to use the view three collar and view two sleeves to get my desired look. The collar and the A-line shape of this house coat are the elements of the cape that I will be carrying into my personal project. And here is the back. We have the size requirements, the pattern pieces, as well as the fabric requirements. I am in the part of my sewing journey where I have greatly reduced the amount of patterns that I am accepting into my stash, both through people sending me patterns as well as me buying patterns. So I still do receive and purchase patterns, but not quite as often. So I think it's really cool to make do with what it is that you have. And I see so much flexibility in these old patterns. The last time I made a house coat pattern and deviated from its original design was when I made my raincoat pattern. So go ahead and check that out. I'll leave it linked in the cards. Now it's time to talk about the fabric. I went with this beautiful metallic brocade. It's almost champagne in nature and it has a dark coral um, florals and it's also very textured and some of the flowers are raised and kind of 3D. There's so much texture and depth to this beautiful fabric and I'm so excited to use it. It was like a Christmas gift to myself. It's something that I do every year. Um, at the end of the year, 
I will buy fabric that I wouldn't usually spend much on. So um, I'm finally going to cut into this beautiful fabric. Now for the lining, I'm using some nylon taffeta that I've had in my stash for a while. It's actually a really wide cut of fabric. It's 108 inches and it was from fabric.com, which of course is no longer a thing. So um, I think I purchased like four or six yards of this for another project that I didn't end up doing. So I've been using this for linings ever since and it's amazing and I'm so glad I bought so much and that this fabric came so wide. Now it's time to sew. I do recommend that you use a rotary cutter when you cut out your pieces or at least really sharp scissors and then you also want to use equally as sharp needles. I recommend a fine microtex needle so that way you do not snag or pull any of the metallic threads because it's prone to happen especially if you have dull needles. Do not use dull pins either. Make sure you're using your sharpest pins and um, if you have trouble sticking your pins through the material don't force it just use another pin and set that one aside because you can damage your fabric now I am sewing two gathering threads under the bust because it uses very small gathers to shape the bust area right before you get to the midriff once that is set it's time to sew up the side seams and the side seams only because I'm going to veer a little from the original instructions. For this dress, I will be lining the bodice of this dress and the bodice only because the backside of this brocade is very scratchy on the skin. Uh, but also, I don't know that I have enough of my lining fabric to line both the duster and the complete dress. So I opted to just line the bodice because I can always wear a half slip. I have plenty of those. So I can wear a half slip to protect my legs from the inside of the pencil skirt. Once the upper bodice is complete and the midriff sections are sewn together, it's time to bring them together and make the bodice one. And of course the shoulders are still open and not attached. Then you're gonna wanna repeat all of the steps onto the lining pieces so they're exactly the same and you're not going to attach the shoulders. Make sure that you are sewing with the upper bodice on top so that way you can adjust the gathers as you sew and you don't get any unwanted pleats or folds in your sewing so always leave the gathered side on top. So it is time to sew the lining onto the bodice. I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm going to press this down 5 eighths before I do that because you don't want to catch the lining seam allowance in the sewing. But once I do that, I'm going to sew around everything and then understitch and then we can move on to cutting the skirt. I like to cut things in pieces so I don't have to keep up with a bunch of cut sections and risk it fraying too much while we wait to sew the pieces. So as stated before, I am cutting this dress out as sections at the time because this fabric does fray a lot. And now you can go ahead and serge all of your pieces, but because I am lining most of it, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to use pinking shears to reduce how much it frays. And then I'm going to use French seams on the portions of this garment that does not have a lining. But if you have a serger and you want to use your serger, you can go ahead and cut all of your pieces right away, serge everything all at once, and then you can skip doing it the way that I'm doing. I just like to work in smaller pieces so I don't have large cuts of fabric all over the place and having to keep up with each individual piece for my project. Once the lining is sewn and the seam allowances are trimmed, it's time to understitch and this just helps your lining from being seen on the outside when worn, it won't move forward. Now it's time to close the shoulders up, so make sure that the lining is folded in so that way when you sew it, you don't catch it. Then put everything right sides together and sew across, making sure to avoid sewing the lining. And I'll show you what it looks like on the other side. Then you are going to hand stitch that closed. After you close up the shoulder seams and you do a really nice blind stitch to close the lining up, the bodice is completely done and it's time to move on to the skirt. I'm starting off with the back two pieces or sections of the skirt and I'm adding the darts in first. And then once the darts are in, I'm gonna move over and start working on the vent. To create the space for the vent and the zipper, you're going to want to cut on the cutting line 
on the right side of your skirt and you're going to want to draw in all the markings for this skirt onto the fabric. So you're going to want to draw in the cutting line as well as the stitching line because when you move over to the sewing machine, the you're going to want to use a 5 8 seam allowance to sew on the side that's cut. But because there's an uncut side, the left side is uncut, it's going to cover up the markings on your stitch plate and you won't be able to tell. So drawing in the stitching line with chalk or removable ink of some sort will allow you to have an accurate stitch. Once the back is done, it's time to move it aside and start working with the front. The front, instead of having darts, it is slightly gathered to create a more bubbled shape around the waist. So that's what I'm doing. And then once that is complete, it's time to sew up the side seams of the skirt, which I'm using French seams to do. After the side seams are put together, then I attach the skirt to the bodice, which is already complete. And that is what I'm doing here. And then off camera, I do sew my zipper on by hand because I just want the most delicate, like invisible pin pricks as possible for this lapped zipper application. And um, that's just my preferred way to do zippers now, ever since I learned how to do them last year, I think it was. Um, that's just my preferred way to do it. So the dress is complete and now it's time to move on to the duster. Now, I had to make several alterations to this house coat to make it a little bit more presentable for leaving the house, in my opinion. And the first alteration was to create a facing for the pocket. So that way, if the pocket were ever to separate, even though it's in the side seams, that you don't see the lining first, but instead you see a facing. So that is what I'm doing now. Um, there's four pieces for the pocket, and I do this on all four pieces. The facings were really easy to make. I just marked off a section of the pattern and decided how wide or deep I wanted the facing to go and then I cut like a little rectangle. After the pockets are attached to the duster, I am under stitching the pockets so that way they always stay flat and don't migrate out to where they're like poking out of the side seam because you want this to look as seamless and invisible as possible. Once the pockets are in and they're understitched, then you wanna go ahead and put in bound buttonholes if you intend on having any kind of bound buttonholes for this duster. I completely forgot and put the darts into the shoulders of the front and started attaching it to the back of the duster at the shoulder seams and then I had to take it apart on one side so I could put in the bound buttonhole because you do need it to be as free as possible to put in a nice bound buttonhole that's level and not crooked <laughs> so that was my mistake and I did have to go and fix that after the shoulder seams are put together the side seams are still open because I like to ease my sleeves in while the side seams are still open. That is always the easiest and most effective way to ease sh um, sleeves in for me. Um, may not be the case for other people, but that's just the best way for me. So while I start putting in my gathering stitches or my easing stitches for this, I'm going to tell you another very important alteration that I made to this duster, or at least in my opinion, another important one. This duster should have had a back seam, but I omitted this back seam and cut it on the fold instead because I felt like it would look a lot nicer um, to not have a center back seam on this duster uh, because of course I'm trying to convert it from house coat to duster. So that is another important alteration that I made. Once the sleeves are eased in, it's time to sew up the side seams and your duster will officially be closed. The last alteration that I made to this pattern was to create a lining. And in order to create the lining, all you do is take the main pattern pieces for the duster um, and then you cut off the facing pieces. So this house coat provided you with a neck back facing as well as facings for the front of the coat. Cut the coat out as usual on your fabric and then use those facing pieces to cut the facing sections off. For the sleeves, you can cut them exactly the way that they provided for the pattern and then you can shorten them when it's time to hem them. But for the lining, it assembles exactly the way that the outer coat was done. So just do that and you're just going to omit the collar pieces. But speaking of collar pieces, it's time to sew the collar together. And I used one layer of interfacing so that way it has a nice little 
stiffness to it and it drapes well with this coat. Okay, so we are almost near the end of the outer layer of the duster. Um, so I just have to sew this facing on all the way around. I have the sleeve folded up. At first it was like a three quarter, not even three quarter, but like an elbow length sleeve. But now I think that it would look better if it's a short sleeve um, because I feel like it might be too much with the collar and the collar stays like I love the collar. So um, I'm considering making it short sleeves so that way I can wear opera length, like gold opera length gloves up to the sleeve for drama. <laughs> so... Um, yeah, I'm going to put that on the machine, sew that up, and then I'm going to start working on the lining, which is put together the exact same way, minus the facings and the collar. So I'm going to do that off um, camera so that way I can get it done quicker. And then I will be back to like stitch the lining in and do the button and then it'll be time for the reveal. So I'm really excited for this project. I can't believe it's taken months to get to this point because it literally took me a day to get this far on the duster. Um, I just postponed it because I knew it was going to be too hot to wear. So it kind of took the wind out of my sails for this project. But now I'm so excited to wear it. I don't care if I sweat to death. Um, I'm going to put it on. So as I said in the previous clip, it's just time to sew the facing on. And you see how the facing is laying directly onto the main fabric. Basically, that's exactly what you want to do to the, the pattern pieces on the lining. Cut the lining out as normal, then lay the facing pieces on top and cut that out and use the facing pieces as a template to cut out the lining. Um, if you have any questions about this, leave it for me in the comment section and I'll try and clarify it more. So now it's the lining and I decided to add a monogram to it because I've seen a lot of vintage coats and dusters have like the original owner's monogram on the inside of the lining and I thought that would be really cute. I also added an inside pocket, uh, like a welt pocket at the last minute. I thought it'd be nice and pretty useful because I don't usually carry purses when I go out and truth be told, I don't even really like pockets either. So um, I usually just travel lightly my wallet and my cell phone and so I just went ahead and added another pocket just in case so now I am working on the collar I'm trying to make sure that I fine-tune everything and so once the collar was attached to the coat it pulled differently than when it wasn't attached so the under collar started to peek through so I'm using the tiniest little stitches to roll the under collar back underneath the upper collar and then I'm using teeny tiny stitches to pick threads from the under collar and tether it to the upper collar. Um, these should be nearly impossible to see so I'm using very teeny tiny stitches and as you can see on the right side is where I've already done the work and the left side still needs to be done. And I go around and do this all the way around. I'm doing this first thing in the morning, so I'm still in a house coat with my scarf on. And um, yeah, I just go around the entire collar, correcting that and making it as nice as possible because we've already spent so much time, effort and money on this project and we wanna make it as fine tuned and as pretty as we can get it. We are nearing the end of the video and I wanna thank you so much if you've made it this far. Please like this video. It really helps push my videos through the algorithm so more people get to see it. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing before you go. Special thanks to my bobbins over on Patreon for going the extra mile to support me. If you would like to support me further, you can become a bobbin over on Patreon where you will sometimes get early access to my YouTube videos, sneak peeks. They have known about this project for several months now. You can help me decide what notions that I put on a project and you also get some exclusive content over there. You can also leave me a virtual tip over on Ko-fi but none of this is necessary. The best way to support this channel is to like and share. I appreciate all the support that I get. So now it's time to show you the full reveal. 
I think that I was able to get my own version of a designer $1,800 brocade 1960s set using my own resources and creating something that I feel like suits me personally better. I feel like the fitted midriff silhouette is something that suits my body really nicely and it's overall better than like that very loose fitting shift dress with a belt that wasn't even fitted. Um, just look at the inside. Um, I love the monogram. I love the lining. Uh, everything's just so perfect about this piece. It's so me. I feel like the collar is very big and reminiscent of the original, but the sleeves are really nice, especially for me since the dress is sleeveless underneath. I was able to recreate this set for about $120 in just materials, not counting my labor. And here is the try on. I am beyond pleased with how well this came out. I know it will be even better once all of the accessories are here, the more permanent accessories, but I used some ivory cream colored gloves to kind of simulate the idea. The gloves that I ordered are opera length, so it's going to go well above my elbows. And I think I'm going to order some vintage inspired gold shoes to complete the look. I will give updated photos in my community tab of the accessories and everything when they all come in. But you have to let me know what you think of my version of this outfit. I am not a celebrity designer and I don't know if that accounts for why the original set costs so much. But I do think that I like mine better, especially for my personal style. I am absolutely inspired to make more brocade sets in the future. If you haven't already checked out my 1960s brocade suit video, I'll leave that in the cards above. I've made this dress several times before and I have to say the brocade makes a difference. This is my favorite version. Thank you again for watching. And before I go, I wanted to let you know that I will be making a hat to go with this outfit. I'm still waiting for the gloves to really complete the look. So it's not just quite complete. Um, when I make the hat, I do upload my hat making videos over on Patreon as exclusive content and it will be available um, in August. So if you're interested in seeing me make the hat for this outfit and seeing it all put together, I'm really hoping that the gloves get here in time for when the hat is completed so I can get a completed like outfit look very soon. Um, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and become a bobbin. The link will be in the description below and I'll show you how it is that I make my hats. And you can also find other hat making videos among my exclusive content over there. Um, so thank you again for watching. I hope you become a bobbin, but I really appreciate you being here now and I hope you subscribe in to see you in the next one. Bye.